Please remove your hats and remain standing while we pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this night that we can all get together and commemorate the hard work this class has done over the past few years. Um, we thank you for the ability uh, to go to a school that prioritizes honoring you and allows us to praise your name freely. Lord, I pray for the future of this graduating class, that wherever we go, we'll continue to lift up your name. Pray for this service, that in everything said and done here, we'll glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. My name is Matt Gossage and as the interim head of school and on behalf of the faculty and staff at Westminster, I'd like to welcome you to the commencement exercises for the class of 2022. I believe I have the best view in all of Augusta right now on this stage. Uh, I'd like to welcome you. Your presence brings a depth of meaning to this event that cannot be measured. You have literally been with these students every step of the way. You've come from near and far to be here this evening. You blocked this night out months in advance and you really don't care what you're missing. There is no other place you'd rather be tonight. Class of 2022, I hope you reflect on the example of the love of Christ behind you. Abiding, personal, claimed, sacrificial and unconditional. Take that in and be sure to thank the people behind you this weekend 
if you haven't done that already. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you the salutatorian and valedictorian for the class of 2022. This year's salutatorian is Brad Joyner. Brad plans to attend Rice University and major in linguistics. He is a graduate with distinction and member of both the National Honor Society and National Beta Club. Brad also ran for the varsity cross country team and the varsity track and field team throughout high school. He was selected as a captain of both teams this year and has earned both all region and all state honors. While at Westminster, Brad has been awarded numerous accolades, including highest average in multiple classes, four gold medals on the National Latin exam, and high honors on the National Greek exam. Outside of the classroom, Brad has enjoyed serving the community as he volunteered at First Presbyterian Church and at Women's Health of Augusta. Brad's quiet demeanor and quick wit will be greatly missed. Congratulations, Brad. This year's valedictorian is Eli Scott. Eli plans to attend Georgia Tech to study mechanical engineering. While in high school, Eli ran on the varsity track and field team and the varsity cross country team, helping to lead the cross country team to two state championships while earning an individual state championship in his own right. Eli is a graduate with distinction and member of the National Honor Society and the National Beta Club. He has achieved the highest numeric average in multiple classes, four gold medals on the National Latin exam, and an AP scholar with honor recognition. Outside of the classroom, Eli tutors younger students through our peer tutoring program and spends time volunteering for the technology team at his church, Warren Baptist. This year, Eli was named one of the Augusta Sports Council's Game Scholarship recipients, as well as the winner of the GISA's Morris Johnson Award for Excellence in Academics and Athletics. Eli's dedication and commitment to excellence are evident in all he does. Congratulations, Eli. So Brad will come and speak, and then we'll hear special music from Brittany Patterson and Jenna Buchanan, and then Eli will speak. Thank you, Brad. Welcome to all students, faculty, staff, family, and friends to the commencement ceremony of Westminster's class of 2022. I am Brad Joyner, and I was given the opportunity to open this monumental occasion with a few words as the salutatorian of this year's graduating class. Uh, we are gathered here to honor all the hard work of these remarkable students over these many years at Westminster, as well as the legacy we will leave behind as a class. Of course, if I were to list off all the individual and collective accomplishments of the class of 2022, we would be here way longer than I think anyone wants to hear me ramble on. Instead of doing that, I'd like to recognize God's faithfulness to our community over the many years of this school's history, because as many of you know, uh, we're entering our school's 50th anniversary this year. Uh, I've been a student at Westminster for over nine years, Many of my peers have been at Westminster since pre-K, while others only started here in high school. Whether it's been 13 or 14 years, or even just two years at Westminster, you can't overstate the impact Westminster's had on building us up as individuals. One of the main traits I've developed as a student here is perseverance. Jonathan Apostle, last year's salutatorian, also talked about perseverance during his speech, but because it was the first thing I thought of when I was brainstorming my speech, I'm just gonna go with that. Uh, there were many times during my high school career where I just wanted to give up whatever I was doing. Uh, for example, I wanted to give up running if I had a bad race or if it was a difficult practice. For example, 1,000 meter repeats on this field in August, 95 degrees, full humidity, it makes you wanna quit. I wanted to give up my rigorous course load, like when Mr. Bell assigned the 25th a push packet. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Bell. <laughs> I wanted to give up in my hardest classes 
if I didn't do as well as I wanted. Like, I admit I got a 50 on a physics quiz once, and I know I'm standing up here, but that happened. <laughs> However, I continued to push myself to excel in the face of these adversities. By doing that, I developed a work ethic and a perseverance that will remain with me throughout college and the rest of my life. Everyone in this class has had to persevere to their own respective problems. And we stand before you all as a product of all our hard work at Westminster. A more important aspect of my upbringing at Westminster is the biblical worldview under which it operates. We learn to honor Christ first in everything, as he is the reason we are here today. All the knowledge we've obtained here at Westminster would be in vain if we did not place Jesus in his rightful place at the center of it all. Most of us will be heading into secular environments where our faiths will be challenged more than they ever have before. And my faith is not perfect. I have a long way to go to get where I need to be in my relationship with God, but having that strong Christian foundation will be essential for continuing to walk in the way of the Lord in college. There's a great deal more that I could say about Westminster's importance in my life, but I'll conclude with one final message to my classmates. My Latin teacher, Mr. Nichols, who has one of the greatest minds I'll ever meet, wrote the following phrase on the board for my final Latin class, Wentum ad supremum est, which means the end has been reached. However, a more literal translation would read, it has come to the highest point. We are at the end of our time here at Westminster, and we've reached that point towards which we've been building for our entire lives. We finally made it, class of 2022, and we have been provided with an excellent education that equips students to live extraordinary lives for Jesus Christ. This is our mission. We are ready. Now, go out and live it. Thank you. Forgive me. 
the things I've done you blame me for But then I guess we know there's blame to share And none of it seems to matter Mr. Gossage, Mr. Weaver, Ms. Bramhall, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, parents, honored guests, and fellow students. When reflecting on my time at Westminster, I thought of the many lessons which were taught to me over the years. And I realized that several of these lessons came from my experiences while training and competing for running. While my races happened on the track or 5K course, I know all of you had your own races. Maybe it was in the classroom or working on a play, whether it be performing on stage or working behind the scenes. To some, it was creating amazing artwork. For others, it was fighting on the field or the court. Maybe to some, it was building a robot, or maybe it was coding, or maybe it might have been intensely arguing in debate. Although we have had different experiences, I suspect we can all take away similar lessons which can apply to the rest of our lives. And unsurprisingly, these truths we have learned are often backed up by the truths found in scripture. I would like to share with you a few lessons which I have learned and which I hope that we will all take among us as we transition into a different stage of life. First, I have learned from my time under Coach Johnson that you must run your own race. Comparison with the success, successes of others will never provide you with satisfaction or contentment. As it is said by Theodore Roosevelt, comparison is the thief of joy. It is best to focus on the race in front of you and push yourself to do the best that you possibly can. It is very satisfying to see the fruits of your hard work and to, of your hard work and focus. Proverbs 3, 25 through 27 states, let your eyes look directly forward and your, gray, and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. Also, don't look back. While it can be tempting during a race, you should not look back from where you came. Instead, your focus should always be directed in front of you and towards the finish line. By looking back, you will lose focus on the race, get off track, slow down, or start to worry. This applies to life as well. If our sole focus is on just staying ahead of failure, failure or the past, then we will never be able to reach our full potential. Rather, our sights should be set on the hope that lies before us achieving goals which truly matter and are worthy of obtaining. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 clearly states, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. I also appreciate the way that C.S. Lewis wrote about where our focus should be. He said, Aim at heaven, and you will find and you will get earth thrown in. Aim at earth, and you get neither. Instead of anxiously being focused on the troubles that lie behind us, let us keep our eyes on the prize and on the path before us. Along the same lines, it has become clear to me the significance and the consequences of our thoughts. Throughout my running career, I saw how the ability to mentally fight against doubt was essential. 
For example, if during a race I had accepted a defeated attitude in the middle of a run, the doubt would cause me to slow down and I would be set on a path towards a disappointing result. If I wanted to succeed, I had to choose to fight by per persevering despite hardships and difficulties. The Bible also emphasizes the importance of thoughts when it says in 2 Corinthians, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Next, I have learned the importance of community. A journey is much more enjoyable when, you have, when you're surrounded by friends and family, people who truly care about you and will stick with you through both the ups and the downs. We were not created to make it through this life alone. I mean, you gotta spend time with the boys. While in a race, hearing the cheers of those watching helped me to drive out the doubts of my mind and to boost my confidence. I've come to understand that being surrounded by encouraging people helped me to keep pushing forward and to continue to dig deep in every situation, whether it be easy or difficult. We read in Proverbs 17, 17, friends love through all kinds of weather and families stick together in all kinds of trouble. Therefore, I hope that each one of you will find an encouraging community in which you will thrive, since you all definitely deserve it. Finally, while being on the cross-country team, I came to learn the immense value of service. I had the privilege of witnessing a clear example of what it means to serve others selflessly and with an open heart through the presence of Ms. Vogelin. The generosity of Ms. Vogelin, who acted as the team mom, was poured out to every member of the team. Throughout the years, she would never hesitate to provide water or rides to anyone who needed it. Her encouraging words and attitude lifted the spirits of all who were around her. From her example, I have learned the immeasurable value and the true impact of a person with a servant's heart. Philippians 2, 3-4 says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. While it is easy to become absorbed in our own interests, it has become apparent to me that it is much more worthwhile and rewarding to lift others up. While we all still have many races ahead of us, with those races looking vastly different, I encourage you to run your own race, keeping your eyes ahead to the prize that lies before us. Don't look back. You're not going that way. There's so much to look forward to ahead of you. And don't worry, you don't have to go alone. In fact, it's much more, it's much better to go together. And I know if we, if we have looked out for each other, giving open-heartedly and generously, then we, have, then we will have certainly done well on whatever race we take. It's going to be great. In fact, we are promised an amazing future. As it says in 1 Corinthians, run in such a way as to get the prize. We do it to get a crown that will last forever. Thank you, class of 2022. Run your race. Thank you, Eli. <clears throat> this distinguished alumni award for 2022 is the first given to a couple at Westminster and recognizes the accomplishments sacrifices and service of these two Westminster graduates. I'd like to suggest a framework as you learn about this couple. We're talking about a couple educated at Westminster, nourished at a solid gospel church, and serving professionally and personally at a high level. Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Scoggin is a 2001 graduate of Westminster. He entered the Air Force in 2005, graduating from Clemson University with a Bachelor of Art in Political Science. In 2012, Lieutenant Colonel Scoggin was selected to attend Air Liaison Officer Training and was assigned to the 82nd Airborne Division, earning his Army Airborne and Army Pathfinder qualifications. He was an Air Force Liaison to the Joint Special Operations Command at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Following his service with the Army, Lieutenant Colonel Scoggin flew in support of two special operations squadrons on multiple platforms. He currently serves as the Force Development Director of the 724th Special Tactics Group. That group develops advanced tactics, techniques, procedures, and equipment for U.S. Special Operations Command and the Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel Scoggin is a command pilot with more than 2,000 hours and over 800 combat hours. In addition to his degree from Clemson University, has completed the Air and Space Basic course at Maxwell Air Force Base. He also has a master's degree in international relations from American Military University and has completed Air Command Staff College at Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. His wife, Becca Vizi Scoggin, graduated from Westminster in 2000 
if I might add, by far the sweetest VZ child. <laughs> she worked in the office of the governor of South Carolina for two years. Later, she worked as the political director for the South Carolina Republican Party. She was the first female to hold that position. After their marriage in 2008, Aaron was stationed at Joint Base lewis McCord in Washington State. Becca spent many hours there, working alongside other spouses, encouraging and assisting them. The Army base had 40,000 active duty military and 60,000 family members at the time. By appointment of the base commander, Becca was selected Wing Key Spouse of the Year in 2010 in light of her commitment and service on behalf of her fellow spouses based wide. Throughout her almost 15 years as a military spouse, she steadfastly su supported Aaron and his military career. And during countless and often sudden separations due to military training and deployments, as well as multiple cross country moves. Her warmth, hospitality, humor, and kindness have regularly been a benefit to others. Many Westminster alumnus and school families are recipients of the outreach and encouragement that Becca and Aaron have shown to so many people over the years and continue to do so. This year, Becca went back to full-time work outside the home. She regularly hosts families in her home every week as a small group leader alongside Aaron through their church, Redeemer Presbyterian in Pinehurst, North Carolina. It is a privilege and a pleasure for Westminster to honor these two graduates for their service to one another, their service to so many other military families, and their service to our country. Thank you both. Would you please come forward? Brad, Brittany, Jenna, and Eli, that was super impressive and a very tough act to follow. Uh, thank you for the privilege of inviting us to share in this special night with you tonight. Uh, thank you to the Westminster Board, the faculty, uh, the parents, the students, um, Mr. and Mrs. Gossage, thank you, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Hanks, thank you very much. For years, Mr. Hanks and I talked about uh, me coming down here on a trip maybe sit down with five or six individuals to see if anybody was interested in pursuing military education. Um, this is a little bit more than I bargained for. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, we're here, and uh, I really appreciate the honor. Last time I was in front of this many people of this size, for a Westminster audience at least, um, it was at a senior, senior chapel speech. Uh, Cindy was there. <laughs> um, that speech delivered by me and my good friend Tafik uh, earned us a week of in-school suspension. <laughs> uh, carrying rocks from that side of campus to that side of campus. Um, <laughs> judging from my parents' face, they, they forgot about that. <laughs> judging from Mr. Hood's face, he didn't. <laughs> But that experience taught me some uh, tough lessons in uh, respect, tactfulness, and humility. And reflecting on that experience and the re request to submit a, a brief bio uh, for tonight reminded me it was often the challenges, trials, and failures when I grew the most here at Westminster and since then. In the face of adversity over the years, I've learned to say good, to quote warrior philosopher of our time, Jocko Willink. Playing varsity soccer first three years here, we didn't make it to the finals. Good. We learned we needed to work harder and build cohesiveness. We ended up taking home the state championship our senior year. Ninth grade, failing one of Mr. Nichols' infamous Latin midterms. Good. I learned to better prioritize my time and commit to studying. Today, I have the opportunity to train elite special operations units we create scenarios and environments for these operators to push them to failure so that 
when our nation asks us, we can accomplish no fail missions. Graduates, you've been challenged, and you're going to continue to be challenged. You didn't get into the school you wanted. Good. You've learned a valuable lesson. Not everything goes as planned in life. You didn't get the scores you wanted uh, as you finished up here. Good. You learned to work harder and fight harder on the next test and put the past behind you. Brad and Eli couldn't have said it any better. Congratulations to you. Incredible job. Enjoy this moment and get ready for what's next. Thank you again to Westminster. It remains the touchstone by which our family addresses the academic rigor and extracurricular activities of the institutions we enroll our own children in. And now I'll pass it over to my favorite alumna. See, Mr. Nichols, something, something stuck. <laughs> um, and my wife, Rebecca. Um, I, this moment's really ironic for me. There was, I think, some question for a while there about whether or not I was going to achieve alumni status anywhere, let alone be a distinguished one, but I'll take it. And the nicest VZ compliment. Mr. Gossage and I go way back. He actually was my headmaster until I was in about sixth grade. Um, but Westminster, I have so much respect for this place, and I'm just really grateful for everything. I mean, I met my husband here. Um, which has obviously been a big life changer. Um, I met lifelong friends here that I still am in very, very good touch with. I hung out with them last night while we were here. Um, and it also just provided an awesome foundation for us to launch from. And, you know, I didn't know whenever I was here that I was going to marry into, well, I didn't know I was going to marry this guy when I was here, um, but I didn't know I was going to marry into the military and be kind of sprung out all over the place every couple of years. And, I do feel like it provided such a wonderful foundation for us. Um, I also had a 50 in a Bible class, actually, from here. <laughs> but I will say, one of the wonderful things about this school is that the teachers care so much about the whole student. And Miss Stevenson, who I saw, now Miss Lutz, worked so closely with me to pull that up. And, you know, she didn't have to do that. And that's just like one of the things that I love about this place um, and the fact that now I can officially call myself distinguished. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. And congrats to y'all. Since stepping back on this campus in late November, I feel I've received a great deal more than I've been able to give. One of the greatest gifts I've received is the opportunity to connect with students I knew and taught 30 to 35 years ago and view firsthand the husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, volunteers, professionals, and people God has shaped them into becoming. Not many educators ever have that experience. During one of the first phone calls home to my wife, Linda, I shared with her that Carla Wong McMillan would be our commencement speaker and that I would have the opportunity, the honor, of introducing her. And all of that would mean I'd be able to see her again. Just as Carla Wong McMillan started Westminster in first grade, I came to Westminster when Carla started ninth grade. I know I taught Carla English one of her years in the upper school. At my advanced age, I was having trouble remembering which grade that was. But I was sure that Carla would remember because I was sure the experience had been so memorable. <laughs> so the week that I reached out to Justice McMillan, it must have been a week where her docket was more than full because she wasn't able to recall the grade or much about the class. <laughs> but her memory was very clear about having Mrs. Dillard for AP English her senior year. Her class at Westminster was small. There were 11 students in the entire grade. Carla was bright, I mean really bright. Quiet bright, unless you called on her, and tough. Tough mentally because she was one of three girls amongst a bunch of knuckle-headed boys, and tough because Carla and her four siblings were pioneers at Westminster. She earned the respect of her classmates and every member of the faculty. It was an honor to be her teacher, whatever grade it was. 
Carla graduated from Westminster as our valedictorian and attended Duke, where she majored in history. I know Mr. Johnson was so proud and economics and graduated with high honors. She attended law school as a Woodruff Scholar at the University of Georgia School of Law, where she served on the Law Review Editorial Board and as president of the Christian Legal Society. Justice McMillan had the privilege of be beginning her legal career as a federal law clerk for the Honorable William C. O'Kelly of the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia. After clerking, Justice McMillan was a partner in the litigation group of the national law firm of Sutherland, Aspel, and Brennan. Her practice centered on complex business litigation, including a heavy emphasis on appellate matters. In particular, she argued cases before the Georgia Supreme Court, the Georgia Court of Appeals, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, the 3rd Circuit Court of Appeals, and the Louisiana Court of Appeals. Justice McMillan first served as a state court judge for Fayette County, a position to which she was appointed by Governor Sonny Perdue in 2010. In 2012, the voters of Fayette County overwhelmingly elected her to a full term. Justice McMillan then served on the Court of Appeals where she was appointed by Governor Nathan Deal and took office in 2013. With her election the following year to that court, Justice McMillan became the first Asian American to be elected to a statewide office in Georgia. Justice Carla Wong McMillan was appointed to the Supreme Court of Georgia by Governor Brian Kemp, taking office on April 10th, 2020. Let's take that in, the Supreme Court of the state of Georgia. Throughout her career, Justice McMillan has demonstrated a commitment to service. She currently serves or has served in leadership roles for the Georgia Asian Pacific American Bar Association, the Fayette County Historical Society, the Partnership Against Domestic Violence, the Real Life Center, the Atlanta Chapter of the Federalist Society for Law and Public Policy Studies, the Georgia Legal Historic F History Foundation, and the Board of Trustees of Landmark Christian School. As one might expect, numerous groups and organizations have recognized Justice McMillan's work as a lawyer and her service. I will hit on just a few. The Westminster Schools of Augusta named her its 2010 Distinguished Alumna. In 2015, she also received the Distinguished Service Award from the Asian American Heritage Foundation and in 2018, she was honored with the Women's Leadership Award by the Georgia Asian Pacific American Bar Association. Justice McMillan has been married since 1997 to her husband, Lance, a professor at Atlanta's John Marshall Law School. They have two children, she has a senior, and live in Fayette County. They are longtime members of Dogwood Church where Justice McMillan has served as a small group leader for adult women's and children's small groups. Justice Carla Wong McMillan, thank you for coming to be the commencement speaker at your preparatory school. We are honored. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gossage, for that uh, warm welcome. I did say you didn't have to read all of that, so thank, but thank you anyway. Well, good evening. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, class of 2022, uh, it's my honor to be here tonight to speak to you. Uh, as Mr. Gossage mentioned, uh, I was in your seats some years ago, though we were actually in the air conditioning at First Presbyterian Church. Uh, thinking back on my graduation, I have many fond memories, but to be honest, I have no recollection whatsoever of the commencement speaker, uh, much less uh, what he or she spoke about. So I, I, I thought about it a little bit, so I polled my friends from my class, and none of us, none of them could remember either. And then I polled my siblings. Um, I'm the oldest of five, and we all went to Westminster from K through 12, and my sister Danielle is in the audience today, and none of, us, none of them could remember who their speaker was. So no pressure, you're not gonna have to remember. So instead of coming up with 
inspiring words uh, that you may not remember, I want to take a point of privilege and talk about why Westminster is so special to me with the hope that it will inspire you to consider what makes Westminster special to you. As I said, I started attending Westminster in K-5 in 1978, and you can do the math. Uh, so I have a very long history with the school. This campus was actually very new at the time with just three buildings on, uh, on the three tiers, and two of the buildings are still here. Uh, K-4 and K-5 were in the middle building uh, wh where Knox Hall is now, along with administrative offices and what was then the lunchroom and the assembly room. And elementary was in the building next to the old playground, and middle and high school was in this building right next to the soccer field. As time went on, trailers were added to accommodate additional classrooms, and then the gym and the library were built. But Westminster is so much more than just the buildings. It was the place where I learned my ABCs and multiplication facts, and later learned how to write a really good five-paragraph essay from Mr. Gossage and Mrs. Dillard, and to do calculus and uh, science experiments. The education I received at Westminster was top-notch, not just because I learned facts, but because my teachers taught me how to think and to reason and to analyze skills that I have taken with me to college and beyond. Also have to credit a specific Westminster teacher for the position I'm in today. Uh, when I was in college at Duke, I thought I wanted to become a high school history teacher and was planning to go forward with my Master's of Arts in teaching. But I came home uh, one summer, the summer before my senior year at Duke, and ran into a teacher from Westminster, Dr. John Bartlett. And those of you who have been around Westminster and in Augusta for a, a long time probably remember Dr. Bartlett. Well, Dr. Bartlett was my debate coach and speech teacher, and I also remember taking an art history class with him. Uh, as we were uh, catching up that summer, I started discussing my plans after college, and Dr. Bartlett encouraged me to take a look at law school. Now, no one in my family was a lawyer or is a lawyer, and I really didn't know much about lawyers, except I knew some dads of some of my friends were lawyers. So that was really the first time that I seriously considered law school, but he planted that seed, and I took his advice. Um, I studied for the LSATs that fall, uh, applied to law schools, and ended up uh, going to the University of Georgia School of Law. I'm not sure I would be a justice on the Georgia Supreme Court today, except for that serendipitous conversation with Dr. Bartlett. But I can't talk about my experience at Westminster without being thankful for the fact that the school and its faculty and its board of trustees endeavored to put Jesus Christ at the center of everything. Not only did I receive a top-notch academic education, but Westminster also taught biblical knowledge, theology, and apologetics, treating knowledge about our faith on the same level as other rigorous academic subjects. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but even now I can pull up Bible verses that I learned in elementary school, biblical history that I learned in middle school, and apologetics that I learned in high school. But Westminster provided much more than just head knowledge about the Bible. Our faculty challenged us to live out our faith in our daily lives. My fifth grade teacher was Miss Kathleen Burma. And again, some, mo many of you may remember Miss Burma. Um, because she, I think she stayed here at Westminster for 30 years before she retired. So some of you may have known her when you were in elementary. Um, but my fifth grade year was actually her very first year at Westminster. She had just come off the mission field in Ecuador, I believe, and I found it fascinating that she had been a real missionary. And my, and my class was pretty rambunctious. I was one of three girls in the class full of uh, other very naughty boys. And I'm sure that we tried her patience. I know that we tried her patience. But I just remember how kindly she treated us and how she taught us from her experiences on the mission field. She made a huge impact on me. I can also remember one chapel when I was 
uh, it was either in the beginning of middle school or at the end of middle school or beginning of high school. And th there was this new young headmaster and he came to speak to us and he couldn't have been more than maybe 30 at the time, very young. Um, but Mr. Gossage, uh, my headmaster at the time, spoke from uh, Matthew 14, 13 to 14, which says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its savor, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Now, I remember that chapel so vividly, and I remember how Mr. Gossage challenged us to be salt and light in a world of darkness. And that message impacted me so much that I can remember it to this day. And it impacted me so much in my high school career that I actually based my valedictory address on it and, and talked about that. And over 30 years later, I'm talking about it still. Um, when I was in college, I read a book called Out of the Salt Shaker and Into the World by Becky Pippert. Uh, in that book, Miss Pippert explains how to be salt and light and the sheer Jesus through how we live our lives. Um, class of 2022, I want to challenge you. Um, this school and your families and your churches and your teachers, they have, everyone has just poured into you and prepared you for this day. I mean, you're currently in this salt shaker, in this kind of um, closed-in world, but you're getting ready to, to go out into the rest of the world. And I challenge you to cling to the lessons that you've learned so that you can be a positive influence on those around you instead of the inverse. Finally, the most lasting impact that Westminster has had on me is the relationships that I have developed and the love and support that I have received over the years from my Westminster family. As I mentioned, I'm the oldest of five kids and we all went through Westminster, K through 12. So there was a Wong child here at Westminster for almost 20 years. And Westminster became a second home for us. I especially appreciated Westminster and the Westminster family my junior year in high school. Uh, that was a really difficult year because that year my father was unexpectedly diagnosed with cancer and he passed away that spring. And I just remember the outpouring of support from the students, the teachers, and the parents. Everyone um, said so many kind words to me, and I would find notes in my locker. But that all meant so much to me. And the Westminster family came out again more recently in 2020 when my mother passed away. Now, I see many of you uh, from those days in the audience, and I know there are others who are still involved in the Westminster family, Kelly and Chris Hitchcock, Kendra Finch, Brad and Laura Lee Joyner, Ryan Lutz, Becca Scoggins, and her brothers and sister. Uh, we were all in high school together. And it's hard to believe that we're now our parents' age. Can you believe that? Uh, with children having graduated or graduating today. And uh, my son James is, will actually be graduating from Landmark Christian School next uh, Saturday. And we chose Landmark. Uh, because it had the same spiritual values and uh, emphasis on academic excellence that Westminster had. If I'm going to talk about the Westminster family, I'm also going to have to mention uh, Mr. Randall Nichols. And I, uh, besides Mr. Gossage, I believe that Mr. Nichols is the only one left on the faculty who was also a teacher when I was here. And unfortunately, I made the bad choice of not taking Latin. I took French, but still all my sister and my brothers all took Latin. Um, I can remember Mr. Nichols' first year teaching at Westminster. I mean, he was a brand new teacher. Um, and even though I didn't take Latin, uh, the rest of my siblings did. And I hope everyone here appreciates the high quality language program that you have here, which Mr. Nichols built from basically scratch. Finally, um, I would be remiss in talking about Westminster and the family of, of Westminster if I didn't mention someone known, I'm sure, to most of you. Someone who's a dear friend and part of Westminster from the very beginning, uh, Mr. David Hanks. Uh, growing up, I knew Mr. Hanks as the father of 
Dottie and Carrie, uh, one who was a grade ahead and one who was a grade behind. But after I graduated, Mr. Hanks um, kept in touch with me, as he does with so many alumni. You'll see that he, he's a one-man alumni association. You'll see when you graduate. Um, but he was the person I talked to um, after I decided to go to law school and I was trying to find my way in the law. He gave me my very first job in law school after my first year at his firm. And then when I wanted to become a judge, when I first wanted to become a judge, he did what he did best, which was call around and rounded up support uh, for my candidacy. I can't think of Westminster without thinking of Mr. Hanks. So thank you, Mr. Hanks. In closing, I just want to thank you for allowing me to indulge in this trip down memory lane. And I hope that my remarks will spur you to think back on your experiences at Westminster. I encourage you to hold on to the relationships that you've developed. I challenge you to not forget the lessons that you've learned here. Westminster's mission is to glorify God by providing an excellent education that equips students to live extraordinary lives for Jesus Christ. Class of 2022, I can't wait to see what extraordinary things that you will accomplish. Congratulations. Thank you, Justice McMillan, for that message and that challenge to our seniors tonight. Mr. Chairman, on behalf of the faculty and staff of Westminster Schools of Augusta, I present to you these students to receive their diplomas, thus granting them all the rights and privileges of alumni of the school. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Westminster Schools of Augusta, I accept these candidates for graduation. The first row seniors will go ahead and come up here. At this time, I will call each candidate to come up and receive his or her diploma. I ask families and friends to hold cheers and applause until all candidates have received their diplomas. At that time, I will present the class and we will congratulate the graduates together. William Andrew Banks, Jr. Adam Gustavus Baranowski. Natalie Josephine Benson. Christopher Vo Booker. Sarah Elizabeth Bryan. Jenna Ann Buchanan. Caitlin Noel Dawkins. Hannah Nicole Eady. Sydney Wilson Fitzgerald is in absentia. She could not be with us tonight. Charlie Warren Freeman. Wellesley Kate Fuller. Rachel Ann Goodell.
Adelia Caroline Gransberg. Benjamin Marshall Greiner. Jacob Aaron Hanna. Lily Nicole Hartenberg. Lillian Grace Hornsby. Molly Ann Hughes. Carter Andrew Huss. Madison Ann Huss. Taylor Marie Ingram. Robert Bradford Joyner Jr. Paul Stewart Kastner. Philip Connor Lutz. Benjamin David Conrad Lynch. Charlotte Elliot McGregor. Jane Claire Peacock. Ella Michelle Perry. Randale James Pete the Second. Anna Claire Pruitt. William Caleb Puckett. Joseph Robert Pitts the second. Harrison Allen Rucker. Eli Davis Scott. Ryan Patrick Shiley. (laughs) 
Jackson Wiley Tab. Jason Tan. Witten Alden Tisdale. Robert Thomas Vogelin. Henry Adam Waller. Please join me as we pray for these graduates, soon to be graduates. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for each of these students, uh, for the families represented here, for the teachers, all the just the time, energy, and work for them to get to this point, the people who have just invested in their lives. Lord, as we soon send them out into the world, to different places all over the country, I pray that they would always feel that they have a safe place to come back to here, that the people who have loved and cared for them here at Westminster and here in Augusta will be praying for them and will be here to care for them as they face the trials and tribulations of this world. But, but Lord, I pray most of all that they go out into the world, wherever they are in their faith with you now, if it's, it's a faith that's growing, a faith that they're struggling against, um, just wherever they are in their journey, I pray as they go out that the seeds of truth that you've planted in their hearts uh, would grow. And as they go out into that world, that, that they would remember that the God who created the universe, the God who created this world, um, the God that sent his son to die on the cross for our sins, um, that they were created in the image of that God and that he loves them. So we commit them to you, Lord, as they go out. Um, and we're so thankful that you love and care for them like you do. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Seniors, please stand and face your friends and families. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Westminster Schools of Augusta, Class of 2022. You can move your tassels from right to left, graduates. stand we'll sing a song together all right guys this is the, this is the last time so I better hear y'all right. you yeah. into marvelous light I'm running out of darkness and out of shame by the cross you are the truth you are the life you are the was fatherless, a stranger with no hope, your love strengthened me, your love, no, 
it is in there. A call to come and die. There it is. By grace now I will come. Take this life. Take your life. Sin has lost its power. Death has lost its sting. From the grave you've risen victoriously into marvelous light. I'm running out of darkness and out of shame. By the cross you are the truth. You are the life. You are the way. My dead heart now is beating, my deepest chains now flee. Your breath fills up my lungs, now I'm free, now I'm free. Sin has lost its power, death has lost its sting. From the grave you've risen. Lift my hands and spin around, see the light that I have found, oh the marvelous light, marvelous light. We're doing that four times, so strap in. I lift my hands and spin around, see the light that I have found, oh the marvelous light, marvelous light. Into marvelous light I'm running Out of darkness and out of shame By the cross you are the truth You are the light privilege to be a part of this great community class of 22 2022 one final question for you why is the benediction always the final element in the service it's because this we want the good lord and his good blessings to have the final word in our lives with this in mind please lift your hands and the good lord bless you and keep you May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.